One part I haven't showed that I do, I use a flame for this somewhat because it allows me a point of view, a leverage to where when I'm going in there, unlike an egg, I won't dig too deep because I'll bump and hit the sides and that keeps me away from it. I call this a head bites no-go gauge in a way because I'm actually using a perimeter as a touch to keep me from grinding too far. Now the problem is we got to go back almost to the short turn radius to start grinding and pull this hump because where the push rod bulge is, it still carries the hump almost an inch and a half. So we got to start at the back, pull up several times, then we start bringing this level true. And I'm making sure of consistency by using the snap gauge as a go-no-go no go gauge to get it where I want it. And then after I'm done, I'll actually use a snap gauge to go deep in there to make sure I got them all the right pull. It's very important for consistency. You don't want one port sucking more air than the other. But at this point here, man, the ports are really starting to come into play. This is nothing short of beautiful. Alright, so I'm going to show you how I do it real quick. Let's go ahead and start back at the back. And I'll take, see, I can, if I touch it, look where the shaft is. The shaft will actually touch the hump. So you got to bring the hump down. We bring the hump down where the longer shaft can get back here and cut on that hump. Each, remember, each carbide burr shape means a lot as far as what you can do and how you're porting it. And actually, I'm using the shaft, like I said, to pole vault between that so that it lets me get a contouring shape that I want. That's, buddy, that's from years and years of using the snaps and goes, no goes, to get it the way that I want it. And it's just tricks you learn along the trail. Believe me, I've given y'all more than 90% of the books and other things I've read. And believe me, I keep up with everything's out there. Nobody really goes into it this fine and tells you. So I'm <clears throat> the whole purpose is try to give you DIY guys some leverage to work through this. But anyway flame on this particular head. Now, on another head like a big block Chevrolet, I might go to a big giant egg or even a ball in some situations. It just, a lot of it depends on the shape of the port it, itself in doing this. And then every once in a while, I'll come on back. So, I might have ratios of five inner swipes to one outer swipe. In other words, four or five up and down times versus one or two right here to get it to pull the shape that I'm wanting it to get. Then every once in a while I might glance over at the wall and touch off a couple of places because as you're staring at it, you see things at certain angles. Say, so, well, I might can touch that a touch more. I, I just go back and forth on it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull this in. Right there is my big hump, which is right below the screw-in stud hole that's in these heads. That one's awful. So, I'm going to work on this a while and finish pulling that in, but that's how I work on that wall, and then I'll go in here and snap and try to get it the right 
size. When I get every one of these where I can barely push this through, this is a window set at 2.070. And on a stock head, whoo, that's pushing it. Especially when it has screw-in studs and guide plates cut in it because you use a half inch diameter hole to cut through the integral uh, push rod support. When it opens it up into a half inch, it'll actually dig right here. I have had several heads over the years that I'll bust through right here at the very tippy top where that half inch is and have to epoxy it. Don't want to do that if you don't have to, but you can. Alright, I'm going to stop right there on that one and finish pulling them in and then we'll go to the roof. Now that we got the width pretty much worked out except for some final touches which I'm going to show you from where we switch from the flame to the egg. I also wanted to show you the original height of this would have been Felpro 1204 or the Blue Stripe Gasket. Well, you have to go, once again, you just don't whittle it, kind of a gasket matching in that funnel. You got to be able to go back and you're going to check this at different positions. I'm not going to tell you the measurement, but as you can see, this one goes back to about where the valve cover is, valve cover hole. Now look here, this won't even fit in. And it's already been blended some, it won't even come close. Now we're going to do that with an egg, a double cross cut egg. And you have to go all the way back to the valve guide and come up. Because one thing's got to happen. Sorry about that. Where this hole is right here, there's a hole. I'll show it to you in a minute where the stud comes in. The end over here has to be lower and this has to be a touch taller. So that as the air passes, it don't create some kind of a wall that it hits and causes the wet flow to accumulate and not go into the bore as a vapor. But the first step is to first go in here and lower it. As you can see, this is 1204, actually a little bit bigger. This is a real 1205 as it starts to go down and begin its squeeze. So I wanted to show you. Now when you're going to know that you're getting near the right point of position, you got this little problem. I can get you a view on each situation here and now problem is see that that's the valve cover hole uh, you're going to bust through this would be the number two and the number eight excuse me the number two and the um, number six or the number one and the number five you're going to bust through that's your valve cover hole now a lot of people get nervous over that I, you, I even had one guy I believe it was the Bledsoe's when I gave them the head, we're fixing to carry the head and have it welded right there, which is absolutely insane. All you have to do is when you put the valve cover bolt in there, put some silicone around the threads, because all you're trying to do is keep a vacuum leak closed. You put a little bit of silicone on down in the hole on the bolt threads, tighten it down, and boom, you're done. That's it. It will not leak. All it would be is a leak. That hole is perfectly okay. And the way it resembles this hole over here, which this is the hole where your uh, rocker arm stud goes through that on these later model heads, 85, 84, what have you, is a big gaping hole GM didn't put in there. Thought they could save money. So, uh, like I said, this end here on the other end of the hole, that has to be lower in dip than near. This has to be a touch higher so when it comes down, it fills the void with airflow and comes up and ain't hitting the brick wall. So I use the valve cover hole in a way like I use the tubes I cut through till I bust and then line everything up. So, I got to go in here now and raise the roof on all of them, bring them up to the 1205 where I get the same markings right around there. See, it won't even fit now. Once that done, pretty much the intake port is taken care of except for the short turn radius blend that I got to do a final blending. Alright, just wanted to show you that hole and the rocker stud hole so you understand how that works. Can't wait to see, see this. Okay, now we're into the roof. Boy, I tell you, adjusting the light where it picks up good on that camera where you can see it's not something very good or easy to do. 
Once again, I use the snaps. I determine my mat dimensions. What I do, this is really hard because you got this big hole right here. Now, I've already lowered or raised the roof, however you want to say it, about a hundred thousandths down. There's still some trench marks where I cut it and tried to set my depth for the roof. Now, what I got to do is only touch the area that's high, which is like this. And I'm going to put a, a lot of pressure on it, by the way. I'm trying to move, I'd say probably about 60 to 80 thousandths worth of material all the way up here. Like I said once again, it's about the 1205 and making sure that we ain't created a damn fire. While I'm doing it, make that edge and pulling it up. And, uh, as you're going, you swap back and forth, you look at your math, you look at your snap. See, I'm not even close. Whereas if I bring it to the other side, you can see how consistent it is. So anyway, I do what I just showed you up to that point. And this is what you're looking for when you're done. The two right here, I believe I've got pretty much finished. Now look what happens. I set this in, look, boom. Now I measure that, that is 900 or 800 in from the flange and that's right where the bolt hole is. See, look. Right there on the money in both spots. Now, this is what I call a pickup point. And on this particular head, I've got three of them. You know, you'd figure something I'd hit this hard, I'd hit more. But once again, it involves time. How much time can you put into it? Right now, at this point, I have 90 hours, right at 90 hours of actual grinding time on this head, including chamber intake, exhaust, and intake manifold. So I'm getting near the 100 hour mark, which I'll probably hit when this is totally over. But this is a pickup point. Like I said, all of them are like that. I'll have another pickup point. I usually pick one down right where the short turn is um, on the roof where it hits the edge of the seat. Here's one. There's one. The width is one on the push rod and then the bowl and the long turn side of the, of the bowl. That's my five pickup points for consistency. Will they all be the same volume? Hell no. Uh, they'll be probably within a cc or two. I'd say two cc's max. I wouldn't let them go out the door any more than that. But that's off the hip. Now with more pickup points, you get more consistent. But that's time and money. When I do an all-out stage five head, which I don't do too many of them, I will have 20. That's right, 20 pickup points. A lot of time. All right, that involves what's called strike, uh, tiger striping and all that. But anyway, that's it. I just wanted to show you that, how I ground, which is with that egg that I used to pull it up to the point. And now we're going to hit the exhaust side and finish up there, which ain't much to do on there. Just a, a little bit of a funnel effect to pit that 1404. Customer did not have enough money for the 150 valves uh, right here at the end. Now, I think he's run out of money. He's uh, budgeted everything. He didn't even want to pay for surfacing the exhaust manifold that went on here, which was ridiculous after he paid $300 for it. Them exhaust manifolds, when I measured them, was almost 5,000 out from the factory, brand new in the box, American made. So that tells you right there. It's kind of like the header thing. Just like on the headers, you buy a brand new set, they're going to be warped right out of the box. 
I try to tell people that all the time. Nobody listens. But anyway, that's my consistency on it, and that's my part on that. Next is exhaust. 